Today I'd like to talk about another problem with the Big Bang model, and that's the Big Bang's black hole problem. If you've watched any mainstream physics, you've probably heard about black holes. And black holes occur when there's either very dense or very high amounts of mass in a place. The gravity becomes so strong that even light can't escape. And that can actually happen with very small amounts of mass. The, in the case of our sun-sized neutron stars, a neutron star with a mass three times our sun becomes a black hole. So it doesn't take a lot of matter to produce black holes in, when you're talking about universal scale sizes and amounts of matter. So if you have a hypothetical universe that starts at a point and has all the energy in the universe, it would instantly form a black hole under current theory of general relativity. And it would stop expanding at that point. And even if it wasn't a point, it was some object, but smaller, say less than the size of our sun, it would still form a black hole. Even if it was the size of a galaxy, it would still form a black hole and it would stop expanding. So Big Bang theorists think that they can ignore the basic natural laws of physics, the attraction of matter. And so they kind of make up their own fictitious physical theory. And so that's, that's the way the Big Bang is. And the problem is even worse than that, because if you take estimates of the total matter in the universe, it's the total mass of the universe is estimated to be 10 to the 53 kilograms. And that may be low, but using that number, that amount of mass would produce a black hole with a radius of 15.7 billion light years, which is slightly larger than the size of the visible universe as defined under the Big Bang at approximately 13.8 billion light years. So even if you were to say, well, let's overcome this black hole problem by starting with a universe that's already the size of the visible universe, well, that wouldn't work because it's still a big, it's still a black hole. <laughs> it's, so the problem is still there. So the only way to avoid the black hole problem for Big Bang theorists is for them to say that the normal laws of physics don't apply because we say so. And to that I say is nonsense that the normal laws of physics apply because we have space and the space contains quantum field. All real space contains quantum field. And as I mentioned in my video on space that isn't space, Big Bang theorists will also say, well, there's space that doesn't have quantum field which is a fictitious type of space that's not known to exist, but they have to make it up in order for their theory to work. So they have a fictitious theory about space and they use that to cover up the black hole problem. But once you have any real space, it has a quantum field in it. So it has quantum fluctuations, would have wavelengths and frequencies. And with wavelengths that we measure in meters and frequencies we measure in cycles per second. So the quantum field gives space dimensions, it gives space time, it gives space a clock rate. And then we have the electric and magnetic constant, permittivity and permeability that come out of space, that determine how fast space can be polarized and magnetized. And if you multiply the electric and magnetic constant, you get one over the speed of light squared. So the quantum field gives us the speed of light. And you can do that with all the physical constants. And so once, which in, even including gravity itself. So once you get down to it, once we, we have a quantum field, we have all the physical laws that we know today. They're all there, they're all set, the constants are set. So we have to deal with gravity from the start. 
we can't come up with this fictitious universe where gravity doesn't exist for the first hundred billion years or whatever you want to call it, hundred billion years. So gravity is a problem from the very beginning and has to be included in any theory of cosmology, of at least a version of it. And But the problem we have on top of that is since our visible universe would be a black hole, and it's obviously not a black hole, something's wrong with our physics of gravity. It means either the constant g isn't actually a constant, or Newtonian gravity or uh, general relativity gravity are wrong, or all three are wrong, and, and that appears to be the case. It appears that G is not really constant, and our theories of gravity are wrong and need to be modified. So when we go back to the matter production problem, in order to avoid black holes, matter must be produced in small quantities so that black holes aren't produced. And that favors a cosmological model where there's uh, more continuous production, where matter is produced in small, say, star-sized amounts of matter that can be broken up into planets later when stars die. So we, we need to have a much smaller scale matter production that avoids black hole production. Now, there may be, when a galaxy is being produced, that black holes are produced in the center, because we know that they exist. So there may be some matter production that becomes black holes fairly quickly. But we don't know, because no one's studying matter production. And that's another one of the serious problems with cosmology, is that we never come up with a good cosmological model until we know how protons and electrons are produced without any matter. And instead of spending so much money on colliders, we should use some of those resources to figure out how protons and electrons are produced without any matter and do experiments. Because once, once we figure that out, then we can go back and tackle the cosmology and we'll have a much better understanding of how the universe evolves over time. But also as part of that step, we're going to have to go back and look at our gravitational theories and fix them. Figure out what's wrong and fix them. Now, there, there already are alternative theories out there, um, and I'll talk about that because that's some of my current research. But Physicists need to stop doing fictitious physics, make-believe physics, like the Big Bang. That the natural laws of physics apply at all times and can't be ignored. And we can't ignore the black hole problem. That matter must be produced in small amounts and not all at once. Or else we'd just be in a black hole and that'd be that no expansion, no nothing. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please like, share, or subscribe, and or subscribe. And if you're interested in reading some of my research, you can go to the link where I have some of my papers. And also I have uh, some books on quantum field theory and one on particle theory that you can read. And by buying one of my books, you help support me. And as an independent researcher, that, that helps me out. I also have a Patreon account. So thanks for watching.